Fish is a double-edged sword. It provides us with all the nutrients we need to build strong, healthy bodies, yet farmed fish might be one of the most toxic things we can consume. We're able to produce so much fish at such an affordable price through farming that we're able to feed a lot of people. On the other hand, going away from nature has many negative aspects, both in regards to the health of the people consuming the fish and the health of the animal itself, as we see with modern conventional farming. What we mean when fish gives us all the nutrients we need to build our bodies, fish literally has every single vitamin and mineral. It has tons of healthy omega-3s and it's also very high in vitamin D3. It has all the fat type of vitamins A, D, E, and K, the water soluble vitamins B and C, every mineral you need. Unlike land animals that are raised improperly, it's very high in omega-3. Whereas if you had grass-fed beef and you ate a lot of marrow and brain tissue, where the omega-3s are concentrated, that'd be fine, but most people get their omega-3s from fish in their diet. I mean, pastured egg yolks are another option, but most people get just supermarket eggs. Fish is very high in D3 because it's wild and the fish get vitamin D3 from the foods they eat. If you wanted to consume a land animal, a source that was high in vitamin D3, I mean, pig's blood is known for having vitamin D3, but the animal has to be in the sun and the meat has to be super fresh. Meat will and blood will contain vitamin D3, but it's just not fresh enough or not on high quality summer pasture when we slaughter it. Fish has that added bonus of vitamin D3. Of course, you can get it from the sun. It's just something that was very evident in a lot of these colder parts of the world, the hemispheres where there wasn't as much sun. It was just another way to get some vitamin D3. Meat has more iron, copper, and manganese. If you consume all parts of the fish, you will get every mineral. If you only consume like fillets, then you might want to consume shellfish, oysters, mollusks to get these other minerals that are not as concentrated in the flesh of the fish as they are in the organs of the fish. The health benefits of omega-3s are really understated in regards to cardiovascular health, how smooth the blood flows, reducing clot risk. Uh, you could look up how quickly an Eskimo's blood clots in comparison to an American's. It's almost like they take an aspirin every day naturally by consuming a high fish diet. Uh, if we look at the life expectancy of countries with high fish consumption, Hong Kong 85, Japan 84, Spain 84, France 83, South Korea 82, America's at 78, so it's safe to say they have us beat out, but what they really have us beat out on is all of these countries have almost half the rates of heart disease that America does. France, South Korea, and Japan are literally the three lowest rates of heart disease occurring in countries. I think South Korea is like 30, France is 42, Japan is 40, America is like 85 or something in regards to rate. In regards to ranking, Japan, France, and South Korea are all dead last at 181, 182, and 183, and America is in like the 120. So although America might not be terrible in regards to heart disease, these countries far eclipse it in, in regards to their longevity as well as just heart health. We can attribute this to both fat and fish consumption in a lot of these cases. You know, although these countries are known for eating fish, fish also contain saturated fat in a lot of cases. It's funny how people look at red meat as bad for you when compared to fish, but if you actually look at the nutrient profile and the fat profile in properly raised animals, it's eerily similar. So the benefits of these vitamins, I will post some videos explaining why we need these vitamins, but from overall health to energy levels to immune system function to overall metabolic function, Weston Price's research is an excellent start because if the diet does not have enough of these vitamins, we start seeing physical deformities, degenerative diseases, especially tuberculosis, and uh, you know the, the phys excellent physical health of every indigenous group had adequate amounts of these vitamins in their diet, from their skull structure to their height to their absence of degenerative disease. Farmed fish, toxins. Most people are familiar with PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls, which were banned in 1977. They're like uh, oils and fluids that were used in electrical equipment, I believe. But those accumulate in the environment and they build up in fish. And same thing with mercury and heavy metals. And these pollutants can apply to wild and farmed fish, not just farmed fish. So the PCB thing is definitely a concern. 
The mercury is not as big of a deal. Uh, mercury only comes up in fish that people don't usually eat, which we will talk about later. I mean, these things, lead, cadmium, you know, you can Google, they all cause neurological damage, toxic to the body, not only during developmental periods, but, you know, when toxic levels are achieved in the body. In regards to what specifically makes farmed fish so much worse is an antioxidant, ethoxyquin, which is used in the protein in feeds, uh, which is actually sold by Monsanto, and although it's legally allowed, when the limits actually end up getting tested, it's seen that they're way above what they're allowed to use. Another pollutant is dioxin. Dioxin is from industrial things like paper mills and you know, ethoxyquin and dioxin are both very negative things that I would consider toxins, although dioxins are technically a pollutant and ethoxyquin is more of a chemical. They're just, they're both negative things that build up in the flesh of the fish that have been tested at what is regulated to be illegal amounts. I think the United States is different, but a lot of this stuff that I'm about to go over and that I've gone over is going to be in a documentary. I'm going to link you guys, Norwegian salmon, most toxic thing in the world or something. They feed these fish pellets, and these pellets are made of like wheat, soy protein, rancid fish oils, very similar to almost the negative things we feed land animals like cattle, crude soy feeds, definitely not what we should be feeding our animals. This alters the omega-3 ratio, this has lets toxins build up in the fat, and the problem with that is farmed fish like salmon have five to eight times the amount of fat they would normally have in nature. So the fat is accumulating more toxins than even a normal wild caught fish would get. And this is interesting because a fish could literally never get that fat in nature. Whereas a grain fed cow that's slaughtered at two years, maybe a grass fed cow could get that big in seven, eight or nine years. But in the case of fish, it's just completely unnatural. It'd be physically impossible to get a fish that fat just like it would be physically impossible to get an indigenous person on an indigenous diet to be obese or even get like a body fat above 15% for men. I've never seen uh, an indigenous person on their indigenous diet from pictures years and years ago that had uh, a, a super unnatural amount of adipose tissue as we see now in Americans and then I guess all over the world. There are so many chemicals and antibiotics that they give to these fish sometimes that they literally have to wear suits to distribute them. And this could be things from trying to manage sea lice to getting rid of diseases and sickness and pretty much trying to keep the fish alive just so they could sell them. Uh, if all of this stuff in the live fish wasn't enough to convince you that you shouldn't be eating farmed fish, then polyphosphates and various preservatives when you buy fish fillets that are frozen or like, like usually the way they freeze squid and stuff is in big blocks and they add the preservatives. Sometimes they don't, most of the time they do, it depends on the fish, where you're buying it from, but definitely something negative about frozen fish, the way they're stored and preserved. It's always something worth asking. Cod can't close mouth. There's a mutation in these farmed cod where they can't close their mouth. They wouldn't be able to survive in nature, but since they're being fed fish pellets, they're able to survive, and you can't tell because you're just getting the fillets of cod. It takes eight generations to fix this deformity and if you've been eating cod you have likely been eating uh, cod fillets from these deformed fish especially if it's farmed fish and not only that they're mixing with the wild stock so you know all this farmed fish stuff keep in mind these sick fish these mutated fish are mixing in with wild fish this isn't a conventionally operated feedlot where you can have cattle inside it's not like they're going to escape and go mingle with the grass-fed cattle and make them sick. I think this is something that uh, I didn't think about that before this video and I'm glad I brought it up. The ocean is not a confined area. That's why we have all of these problems with it and that's why it's so much more difficult and dangerous when we're trying to source seafood. Uh, we spoke about how the fatty fish are worse because they accumulate more toxins in the fat and that the fatty fish, it's a natural amount of fat on the fish. And although on one hand, having 34% fat in salmon means, oh, doesn't that mean I get a shitload of omega-3s? Yes, but you're also getting a shitload of toxins and pollutants from a farmed fish. Heavy metal accumulation. So mercury isn't really a concern because mercury level in tuna is like here and selenium's up here. Selenium counteracts mercury, but in some fish, 
pilot whale, mako shark, swordfish, king mackerel. These foods are dangerous and if you consumed these foods in large amounts every week, you would eventually have some sort of mercury toxicity. And these are pretty much older carnivorous fish and not necessarily larger because a young tuna would have less mercury than an old king mackerel even though it's a larger fish uh, depending on the breed and stuff. But that's just something to keep in mind, the age of the fish, if it's carnivorous, how many metals it will build up. And I'll link you guys to a chart showing uh, the mercury and selenium levels in these fish. But mercury and heavy metals aren't as much of a concern for tuna and such. You know, if they were concerned, we'd be seeing, seeing much more mercury poisoning in these countries here, which we really don't. We only see it in people who eat these carnivorous fish that we really would never have been able to catch or eat. Uh, I mean, there's things like red tide, which can all, I mean, there's so many negative things that can happen in fish, even plastic, you know, uh, and other pollutants that I probably don't know about and you guys are going to remind me of. So red tide is an algae bloom that leads to respiratory infection and it can also infect, I believe, the fish that are, and I'm not sure if they could survive it or not, but I guess they, the fish can survive the red tide and then you could eat this toxic, uh, it's from al an algae bloom, this toxic algae and it gets you very sick and causes respiratory problems. So all of these things, guys, Google them. I mean, you could probably do a five or 10 minute video on every single thing I have here on this list, which would just be uh, too, too much. That's what the purpose of my video is just to get you guys exploring these things. Uh, I guess we gotta talk about fish oil and rancidity of fish oils. I wanted to make a separate video on cod liver oil and comparing them, but I guess I could throw it in here too. This green pasture cod liver oil is rancid. I'm actually gonna throw it out. This cod liver oil, Rosita, doesn't seem to be rancid, but we can never be sure. We can only speculate that both cod liver oils are rancid and that Rosita is just less rancid. So, one of the studies I'm going to put below is on the rancidity of fish oil and how it varies between supplements. And we know taking fish oil makes people healthier. We know that. But I think that's because most people are deficient. I think we need to get fish oil and omega-3s from sources of fish. I think we need to get vitamin A and vitamin D from liver, from fresh sources of fish, and not use these supplements because uh, there was a guy who took two tablespoons of this fermented rancid cod liver oil from green pasture for years and years and years, and he think these oxidized polyunsaturated fish oils gave him his heart disease, which is actually very possible because although we know that Inuits and Eskimos and other indigenous groups ate rotten fish with relish, and many rotten polyunsaturated fat-based foods, it seems that once you take the fish oil out of the fish itself, it oxidizes and becomes rancid in a different way as opposed to natural fermentation. So I'm not sure how well that analogy works. Like, I don't know if consuming rotten fish that Eskimos consumed is the same level of rancidity as we see in this cod liver oil now. It's safe to err on the side of caution. And, you know, I would personally have no problem consuming a teaspoon or a tablespoon of like that cod liver oil per day. It's just, uh, you never know. I mean, I personally have histamine intolerances. So I like, I have some breakouts on my face right now that are actually from taking that blue pasture cod liver oil. I got like five cysts on my face hours after taking it. Uh, definitely something negative to be said about rancidity of fish oils. So I don't want to go too much more into that and speculate, but you know, use it as a temporary measure to increase your omega-3 content, but then, as we spoke about earlier, try to get it through like pastured egg yolks, marrow, brain tissue, very high quality fatty wild caught fish. So what fish should we actually be consuming? And of course, avoid farm deranged. Maybe, you know, there might be some questionable farm raised fish that you can consume once in a while. Maybe it's leaner, maybe it's not too bad to have some raw salmon sashimi once in a while, maybe even once a week from farmed fish. I'm not sure that's too negative for human health. I can't really say that's going to kill you because in the context of most people diets and what most people eat, it's going to actually be healthier for them to eat this toxic farmed fish than most of the stuff they usually eat throughout their day. But the point of this is to optimize our health. So we obviously want wild fish and if you're going to say, Frank, should I get king salmon? It's a larger, older fish and it's fattier, but Sockeye salmon is smaller and it's likely less polluted. You, you never know the answer to pollution, so the safest bet is buy the fattiest, highest quality fish you have access to. Use your taste, guys. 
If you buy some Norwegian mackerel and it tastes delicious or it tastes often bitter, maybe don't eat it. Uh, you know, sometimes the liver of these fish tastes very bitter and off. And sometimes the liver of certain fish is delicious. So that directly correlates to the quality of fish, just as the taste of like grain-fed beef liver is horrendous, or grass-fed baby lamb liver is one of the most delicious things you could eat. Uh, the, the taste and the palate is a sense we have to use here to gauge the health of the food, but go to your local Asian market, go to your local fish market, see what they have access to. Oysters, shellfish, lobster can all be surprisingly affordable and nutritionally complete, and I listed those because they're very approachable. Most people will like clams, mussels, various shellfish, you know, in comparison to eating some mackerel liver. Uh, and, and I tell people, you don't have to swallow down brain tissue and bone marrow every day. Have some oysters and egg yolks. You're getting the same thing. These can be expensive. You know, you could shuck oysters yourself. Uh, I mean, chowder clams are like, I could eat probably 10 pounds of chowder clams a day for like 20 bucks. Some shellfish is very cheap. Some is expensive. Like Dungeness crab is expensive, whereas blue crab is, is much cheaper. There's various price points for every type of seafood, and all of them, for the most part, are nutritionally complete if you eat them nose to tail. I mean, it's just easier to eat a whole oyster than it is to eat every part of a mackerel. Uh, a lot of you guys ask me about fish roe, and guys, this ties into food sourcing. Go to your local fishmongers, see what fish they have, have these conversations with them, see if they can get you fish roe. A lot of Asian markets will make like tobiko, and the way they make the tobiko is they get that fish roe in salted and frozen first. So you could probably buy those bags of salted frozen roe from them. Uh, you could just buy regular ikura. There's a lot of like Russian caviar sellers online to get roe. One way to do it is ask the fishmonger if any of the fish he's selling have roe in them. Or you could just buy five or ten cheap wild caught fish, fillet them open, and see which ones have roe, and then go and back and buy those. There's a lot of ways to get fish roe. And I should have said initially, fish roe, fish eggs, are the most nutrient dense food because they encapsulate all these vitamins, minerals, omega 3s, vitamin D3 in a concentrated amount in comparison to the fish. You know, salmon roe is probably multiple times more nutrient dense than the flesh of the salmon itself. Although, if you consumed the flesh of the salmon, the salmon's liver, the salmon's brain, all parts of the salmon, you'd be getting the equivalent nutrition of the roe. But most people don't do that because they already got the fish on the boat and you don't have access to a lot of that other stuff. So that's why fish row is, it's just a nutrient capsule. It has everything, guys. When I say fish row has everything, you know, it has everything I listed earlier, but in a much more concentrated amount. So you don't have to eat the whole fish nose to tell. You can just have a few tablespoons of fish row. And fish row was one of those foods that they gathered and fed to their pregnant woman, their nursing woman, uh, developing children, couples trying to conceive just as they would have fed kidneys or liver to those people as well. Uh, indigenous groups prized certain parts of the animal for their nutrient content and they fed them to people in various developmental stages of life. Uh, stick to smaller fish. So, although wild caught fish, to me, as long as you're not eating those like mako shark and king mackerel fish, you're kind of fine. It is safer to stick to Norwegian mackerel and Nor the, one of the best fish I've ever had, if not the best. I bought some Norwegian herring the other day, and it was less fishy than the mackerel, but it had just as much fat. Maybe it's because it was fresh, but it was just, I boiled it, it, no salt on it, it was just so delicious, and this Norwegian herring. And also canned cod liver is a great option, and I, oh, I'm glad I brought that up. Canned fish is also a great option. The only concern is the lining of the can, and it, I mean, obviously you don't want vegetable oils in your fish. and if it is olive oil, what's the quality of the olive oil? And you could even argue, what's the quality of the water they're putting in their fish? So, I mean, you could kind of can and pickle your own fish and that'd be great. But I think you want to just try to find, I mean, olive oil, if your only source of nutrition is canned fish, then you have to explore what your best options are. You know, canned cod liver oil in its own oil, you know, is, is amazing. And sometimes they put a little bay leaf in there, but the only concern in that type of food would be, you know, maybe was the fish polluted or is there something negative from the can lining? If you start consuming, you know, you don't want to start consuming cottonseed oil and oysters. You don't want to start questioning if it's actually vegetable oil in there. That's where things get tricky. So definitely use your judgment there. But canned can fish is definitely an excellent source of fish.
fish for some people and approachable too. You know, I think a lot of people like smoked oysters and a lot of different, you know, anchovies are delicious. So I think we've touched on almost everything and I don't want to go too much into fish sourcing because guys, if you have questions, I mean, I don't think there's anything that I missed that's super important here. I think we just really need to understand how important these vitamins are, how negative farmed fish is, and, and how we can easily source fish that's okay for us to eat. Uh, I personally don't really eat a lot of fish because I do eat brain tissue, high omega-3 egg yolks, I eat a lot of animal liver, so I don't really worry about getting my omega-3s from fish too much, although maybe I'll try eating fish for a while to see what effect it has on my blood work. I like to get blood work doing this version of the diet and then blood work eating fish, although I don't really care to be honest. But, uh, you know, the PCBs are definitely a concern, the mercury is just something that's overstated a lot, uh, but I, I don't want to... I don't want to really do a summary and go too much into detail. Guys, I spent 20 minutes drawing this stupid fish. And, like, it actually looks pretty good. You know, especially when you get, like, five feet away from it. But that took me forever, man. I have no artistic talent whatsoever. Uh, if you guys would like to support me, please just share the video. Uh, I've been answering a lot of questions for, like, I've been consulting people pretty much for free. And I just did an update to my Patreon where from, like, $1 to $10, I answer questions in various degrees. 15 to 25 dollars, I do full diet consults through email uh, to various degrees and then for 50 dollars a month you get a half hour diet evaluation, you send me your diet, uh, we do a, I, I evaluate it, I let you know what you should change and then we have a 30 minute consultation conversation about whatever you want. If it's related to the diet you sent me, if it's related to fitness, just about me, whatever you'd like to talk about. So this is a way for you guys to support me as well as me to not give away so much information and spend so much of my time. Guys, I'm a bartender. I work as an actor as well, somewhat. Uh, I work as a personal trainer. I do a lot of things to, to make ends meet and it would just, you know, we're benefiting each other as opposed to me just answering hundreds of questions per day. Uh, you know, just sitting on my computer. It just makes my life a lot easier. If you guys would like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations, uh, you can email me, Frank A. Tufano, F-R-A-N-K-A-T-U-F-A-N-O, at gmail.com. Uh, I do mostly diet write-ups, uh, you know, just figure out what people need to remove from their diet, how to optimize nutrient density, and then we go briefly into fitness and vitamin D3 and water, and just improving their overall lifestyle. Uh, I'm going to get some testimonials. I just have to find the emails and, and Skypes of the people that I spoke to and get them up on a website. I'm going to do that in the near future. But outside of that, uh, please just share the video. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to see any other videos in particular, please let me know. Let me know how you like this. I know, um, I don't think you guys can read this too well. Uh, if my handwriting was neater, you could probably read it. And if the text was larger, you could probably read it. So. I don't think my handwriting is going to get any better, but I'll try to make it larger and, and most of the videos won't have as many bullet points and I have, maybe I won't draw a stupid big fish at the top, although I was debating on either drawing like a swordfish or a sword with a fish attached, but I figured that swordfish just fit it so well, but I just remembered TMAO. I think that's something we have to talk about. We can also get omega-3s from plants such as leafy greens, flax, walnuts, and soybean. <laughs> These people are brain dead, man. Saying you can get omega-3s from nuts instead of fish. Oh my god. And, and forgive my pronunciation of this stuff, guys. Trimethylene, trimethylamine and oxide is TMAO. And it's viewed as negative in fish. But the problem is TMAO is a red herring. When, when they isolate TMAO and they blame red meat and egg yolks for high levels of TMAO. Fish is like 50 times higher in TMAO, even more than that. And when TMAO is consumed in the context of fish, it's shown not to be harmful. So that's, I think that's something that someone might have brought up in the comments, but it's just literally, it's the most BS vegan argument you can make against, I just find it funny how they bring it up when trying to advocate against consuming red meat and eggs, when fish is so much higher. And when people start trying to talk negatively about fish, about pollutants and toxins, it's just like they're trying to find any excuse to be anti-fish, anti-meat, to justify their diet. So I guess that's it. If I, if I missed anything else, guys, I'm sorry. There's only so much information that I come across in a couple hours of research. I'll try to link everything in the comments. Let me know if I missed anything. I, I'm editing this video and I just realized 
what I should have done, and I'm not filming this again, but what I should have done was, I should have done like a, another fish on the other side because it's double edge, right? So I should have done like, oh my god, and guys, this took me, I literally spent 20 minutes drawing this fish, so this one's probably going to be boshed a little bit. You guys get the idea, right? That would have been cooler, right? I don't know, I could have done a sword too, I could have done like a, what would it be, like a hilt? A hilt with a fish coming out of it, like this. I could have put all these things here. A fish dagger. <laughs> I'm going to lose my mind.